Morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chris Loves Comics. It's Friday, Black Friday. I hope you guys have found everything you were looking for on New Comic Book Day on Wednesday. And I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I, I unfortunately had to work, although, but I got double time, so it's uh, it'll definitely be a good paycheck. But I still, I still miss the family. But like I said, I hope you guys had a great week. I'm going to be going over my haul this week, and as always, as I like to start off this show, thank you very much to everyone who subscribed to me. It really means a lot to me. I really enjoy enjoy your guys' comments, and I really enjoy having you guys watch the videos. It, it really does it does make me smile. But with that out of the way, I wanted to say that I've been really enjoying DC a lot. I've been having so much fun. I um I do love my indies as well too, but I've been really I've been really having a lot of fun with DC, especially with titles like this, uh, Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong by Brian Buccioletto. This this was such a great action story. <laughs> Superman Superman fights Godzilla. Uh, <laughs> uh, Superman gives him a good punch. He's like, hmm. <laughs> I thought I thought it was great, and as. <laughs> As Godzilla sort of gives uh, Soups a nice tail whip through a building, in classic Superman fa fashion, he apologizes about the damage. Sorry about that. Is everyone okay? <laughs> when he just got, he just got demolished. But I'm really, I'm really enjoying this. This is a, I believe it's going to be a seven issue miniseries. So there will be a trade that comes out if. But we're only on issue two. So if you were able to find issue one, and uh, this just came out this week, so. I you know I highly recommend this this book. It's definitely an A plus. I love the art, especially with uh, Red Hood trying to take a shot on um, old Godzi over there. <laughs> but um, sorry, no, there's a sorry, not Godzilla. There's a there's a sort of Mothra looking creature that that uh, Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon are looking at. This is this is so well done. It's great dialogue and it's great campy act, uh, great campy humor and great action. Especially with, uh, you know, Godzilla and and Clark uh, trading off laser beams, it's it's really well done. I highly recommend it. If you like Godzilla and you love DC as much as I do, it's definitely a book for you. And then we get to Batman Offworld by Jason Aaron and Doug um, Doug Mankey. M A H N K E, I think that's how you pronounce it. But the art in this, uh, the art is fantastic. The story is pretty good too. I, I enjoy. It. I would give it a B plus. Um, you don't know how Batman lands in this, uh, in this space se space sector zero nine zero nine. It kind of has like an alien tone to it, and uh, just a uh, like. Um, like a Jason X, like it was a horrible horror movie, but <laughs> the Jason X part with Batman with a chainsaw <laughs> chopping down aliens, it's fun. I maybe it's an A minus as I'm as I'm talking about it. It's just, it's just. I, I'm sorry if I'm so giddy. I just I'm just really having a good time with with DC as I mentioned before. But it's it's good. I I like it. I'm gonna continue. I think it's a six issue miniseries or five issue miniseries. So again, another trade will come out, but. We'll give this an A minus. A minus. Batman Offworld. Like I said, it um, it's a it's a good it's a good book. It's definitely worth it's definitely worth your money. And of course, the best book that you can get for three ninety nine, World's Finest, Batman Superman by Mark Wade and Dan Mora and Tamara Bonvillain. Yes, <laughs> Tamara Bonvillain on colors and uh, inks. It's a good Kingdom Come story where, as Batman and Superman are trying to um, trying to save this alternate Earth from the boy that they saved in the beginning arc, but then you come across. If you've read Kingdom Come, then you will know who this guy is, Gog. Uh, yeah, he's <laughs> he's in the story now, and he is not to be trifled with. <laughs> and I love this page with the. Uh, this this screams Kingdom Come at the end. It's ugh. I can't rave about this book enough. It's so freaking good. World's finest. And next up, Wonder Woman by Tom King and Daniel Samper on on um, art and Tamara More on colors. Another a another a book. I'm I'm loving Tom King on Wonder Woman. Like I'm. I, I love Batman as a character, but I didn't really like his run. But, you know, Tom King has his hits and misses, but 
you know, I feel like his hits are definitely outweighing his misses. He also has the Penguin that's out, which I enjoy. Animal Pound, which is pretty okay. I'm still reading it. It's a $3, $3 book. That's from Boom Studios. It's sort of a um, an homage to George Orwell in 1984. But uh, Daniel um, Simpere is just fantastic on art. I love the way he draws Diana. And uh, it's, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> this is her quote unquote invisible jet. Like, <laughs> oh, it's so good. I'm, I'm enjoying it. And the backup story is really good. It's written by Tom King as well, too. And, um, oh, forgive me. It's on the last page, I bet. Yeah. Bel Belen Ortega on art. It's a really good uh, John Kent and Damian Wayne story. Uh, they're <laughs> they're babysitting uh, Diana's uh, Diana's niece. Look, at, I just picture it. It reminds me of my my little girl. Which is, I wonder Robin. <laughs> it's it's really well done. Definitely another A plus book. And who can do no wrong in my eyes is Jeremy Adams, who is writing the better Flash story. Unfortunately, it's a six issue miniseries. Jay Garrick, the Flash. This is with uh, Judy. And Stargirl hanging out in the mall. Judy has been locked away in an alternate universe. If you've read Stargirl, The Lost Children by Jeff Johns, um, it'll definitely it'll definitely explain it more. But it's you know it's it's a trade that's out right now. It's very well done. I I enjoy it too. That's the art's also by Doug Mankey as well too. So I like I like the art and the story. But you see father and daughter fighting the Robear in a mall. <laughs> It, I do like it with uh, Cor um, Court. Uh, sorry, Star Girls, Courtney, Courtney, and uh, Judy are going to, uh, to the mall. And Judy's never heard of a food court. She's like, I'm going to order all the food. It's it's great slice of life, and it's also great action. Um, nice good splash page right here. That's another A book. Had to get the Lee Bermejo cover as. As I love all his covers, this is Superman number eight. I want to say yes, <laughs> Superman number eight by Joshua Williamson, and uh, this is very well done. It's Lex and Superman versus uh, Lex's Lex's son. He is he is the chained. I had a feeling he was going to be the chained because um, if you read any of like the '80s kind of Superman, Lex was very overpowered, and I felt like. He was. I felt like he was going to be the one that was locked away because father and son have never seen eye to eye, as you can, uh, as you can see, with uh, with uh, Lex Jr. putting his chain around Dad. But this was the end of the chain arc. You see Superman with Kryptonite gauntlets fighting um, Lex Luthor Jr. because he is part Kryptonian because Lex stole some of uh, Clark um, Superman's DNA, and that's how he was forged. But I wonder where they're gonna go with the with the next story. Although Superman has seen better days because um, he does he does feel the effects of the kryptonite because his helmet was busted open and it started to seep into his skin. So we don't know don't know how this is gonna end for Superman. Usually he'll be okay, but he's seen better days. This next book has a great horror vibe, I and mean, it kind of has a Punisher vibe to it. I think it's because um, John Stewart has is a soldier, and this is by Philip Kennedy Johnson, Green Lantern War Journal number three. I would give this a B plus. This was a great story. Um, the I don't know which lanterns these are. These are kind of like the zombie lanterns, as you as you'll see right here. The nice close up of that guy, and uh, let me get it here. but um. I do love John Stewart's constructs because, like I, as a kid, I used to love um, like GI Joe and stuff like that. And look at the big cannon that he has, and he's fighting these lanterns. Um, we don't actually, we don't even know if they're lanterns or not, but they're they are they are not friendly. They try to destroy destroy the Earth, and uh, John Stewart has decided that he made a promise to his mama that he wouldn't fight again and he wouldn't um, pick up the lantern but it's a very touching scene in the hospital with his mom she's in a coma because she was hurt in the train that was uh, falling I was falling up but you know John John did save her but she's um she's in intensive care but John knows that 
he he made a promise, but he has to break it because he has to he has to stop this menace from uh, from coming to Earth. But in the end, you see, um, I guess there's a hierarchy. There's a queen of these zombies, and as you can see, I guess I guess they are lanterns, as I'm talking about, because this this guy's um, making constructs, sort of zombie constructs. But very well done. And like I said, I've I've been having so much fun with DC. For DC next week, I'm really looking forward to Shazam, and I'm looking forward to Green Arrow. There's a few there's a few other titles that are going to be out. I'm gonna give Flash number three by Cy Spurrier uh, another chance. Like I love Mike Deodato on art, but the story's kind of confusing for Flash one and two. And I love the Flash as a character, and I I would really hate to drop that book, but. You know, it's a three ninety nine book. I may just keep it just for the art, but I just hope the story improves a little bit. But on the indie scene, I had to get... I got... So this is um, issue one and two of uh, Dra of Dracula. I love the connecting covers. Like, check that out. I'm trying to get it all in one, um, in one frame with my phone. But this is a four issue miniseries issue number three is coming out December 27th I um, I really enjoy I'm a, I'm a huge Dracula fan I hope they do more with the I guess it's the Universal Monsters saga so I hope they do stuff with like the Wolfman Mummy Frankenstein Creature Creature from the Black Lagoon I hope they really delve into those characters too but that was also an A plus now this is an eight issue miniseries by Garth Ennis and this is the Ribbon Queen if you've followed up with this story, you'll know what, um, so the the, pol the police protagonist in this story, she is seeing this girl that was assaulted and she was killed. And she is sort of representing this deity called the Ribbon Queen. And she's sort of um, like a vengeance spirit for women who have been wronged and women who have been hurt. And the way, the way she gets back at you is she flays your skin right off, and um, and you find out the origin of this of this deity as she goes through this forest, and then her skin starts to peel off, but that's um, and then she comes out without her skin. It's sort of a this kind of is like a good homage to Hellraiser. I loved Hellraiser. Uh, Clive Barker can also do no wrong in my eyes, but. When the trade comes out, if you haven't caught up to it and you can't find the issues, you know, definitely definitely give it a whirl. Garth Ennis, you know, he's known for doing edgy stuff like that. A story that's also continuing to pick up steam is Kill Your Darlings, number three of five, I want to say, or three of six. It's a really good fantasy horror story, and um, I, I really, I really love the art. I really love the art in this book. But this was definitely another A. And the last book, as they delve into the Energon universe, Robert Hickman and Lorenzi, Lorenzo De Felici, Void Rivals number six. Yes, <laughs> number six. Um, but I really had, a good, this was a very good week for comic books. Uh, I'm sorry if I sort of rushed through a few of them. I'm thinking of, like, going into the new year, I'm thinking of a different ways to format the channel. I'm, I'm looking to definitely... Definitely bring up bring up my A game. Maybe add some animation to you know the intros or something like that. I definitely want to spice it up. Um, but you know I appreciate you guys sticking around with me. And like I always say, I know I said before, it really does mean a lot to me. I enjoy the comments and I enjoy talking great comic books with you guys. And I like talking bad comic books with you guys because then um, you know comics are subjective. So what what I may like, you may not like. But you know that's what's great about art. It's all subjective. All right, uh, that concludes this week's episode of Chris Loves Comics. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Uh, be safe out there when you're going for your Black Friday sales. Uh, always support your local comic shop. My store, Rubber Chicken Comics in Bellingham, Massachusetts, they're having a big doorbuster sale. So if you're local to the area in Bellingham, Massachusetts, definitely give them a look. This Saturday from 9 to noon for trade paperbacks, there's buy one and get two of each of leak equal or lesser value um, for free. So you buy one, get two free. And also it's gonna be 25% uh, 20, off all all items in the store. And that's including uh, consignments and slabs. So that's a, that's, a big, that's a big deal. Also they're doing 30% off all their toys, action figures and such, and buy one, get one free for Funko Pops. So 
Uh, if you're local, again, local to the area, Robert Chicken Comics in Bellingham, Massachusetts, definitely, um, when you see, when you see Jay, just tell him Chris sent you, Chris from Chris Loves Comics, and, um, he'll definitely hook you up. All right. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye.